So what do more mature leaders, or I just like to say more experienced leaders, what can they do to build trust and influence with younger generations? Well, the first thing is not to communicate with them as if they're kids. And I know that seems very basic, but so often I interview leaders or I see them in action and they talk about us as if we're their kids or their grandkids, which is, you know, on one way empathetic, I get it. On the other way, it's completely demeaning, right? We're not there because we're your kid or your grandkid. We're there because it's our job and we want to do a good job. So when you view us or interact with us as if we're essentially a kid, that really is a pretty big turnoff. So, you know, let's just check that box of avoiding it. Second thing I see, if you want to influence this younger generation, is to take the time to get to know them. It's very easy to just assume you know what their life is like, or you know what their worldview is, or why that is. But what we find is if an older member of an older generation takes the time to have a cup of coffee or go to lunch or anything, just get to know the younger generation, it creates a sense of trust and a sense of that younger generation being valued that so often doesn't happen today. So literally five minutes just to ask them about their life and how they got to where they are, whatever is appropriate really does build that trust with that younger generation because they're like, wow, they took an interest in me. And the next thing is you want to give them more frequent feedback or communication. And I talk about this a lot. You may have actually seen this in my speech, but so often the, the frequency of feedback does not match what younger generations need. And what do I mean by that? Well, it's not that we need an annual review. What we found is that younger generations want feedback at least every two weeks. Not this elaborate 360 degree reviews, but just a quick hit feedback, check in feedback. Let them know they're doing a great job or an area they can prove, or just you know that, that you, they exist, they're alive, they're working for you or with you. This is a big deal. Why does this not happen? Because older generations were taught if your boss is talking to you, you're doing something wrong. Younger generations were taught the opposite. If your boss is not talking to you, you're doing something wrong. So you want to be the boss that connects across the generations, that listens, that communicates, because then you're going to drive that trust and that influence, which is key for everybody.